If I can get some, uh, everyone to be seated before we actually make a start, we're going to make a start in just a few minutes. Both parties have arrived. And in a few minutes, they're going to make their way into the church. Just a couple of announcements to be made. First of all, is that once we start our service, um, can you please turn off your mobile phones? We want to make the service uninterrupted. Secondly, the public conveniences or the toilets are behind me. Thirdly, in case in the likely event of an emergency, you can see I would prefer that we exit through the front and the side here. Exiting through this will probably lead you into another building. Yes, it will lead you to somewhere else. But we rather prefer that to exit the front and this door and out of the gate. And the assembly area is right next door on the grass over there. Because there is a risk of us not being able to to escape anything that happens the fence over there is a is an obstacle for us so we would rather that we exit here exit the main gate and congregate or assemble down that tree over there okay in a few minutes, they're going to make their way in. One of the adjustments of our day is that instead of the, of the guys over here, they're going to make their way through there. And they will be followed here by the bride and her party. In a couple of minutes I will disappear and then I will be back here to start and then I will proceed onto the stage. Meanwhile, sit back, relax and enjoy the atmosphere. It is not too cold today. It's a very beautiful weather outside. Okay? If there are any questions that you have, there are people around us that will provide the answers for you. But that doesn't stop you from asking me directly. Okay? I will go to the office now. In a couple of minutes, I will be back and then we'll make a start. Okay, thank you. Fire play. 
up standing to show her our respect. in the eyes of the Lord. When we meet today to commit to God two of our children. And I would like to acknowledge ladies and gentlemen that Pastor Louis Vesa has given away her daughter in marriage. It is a joyful day as the Lord is here with us.
Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You may be seated. On behalf of the bride and the groom, it's an honor to welcome you to this very special event. It's an event in which we are coming together in the presence of God to witness the marriage of Jonathan Fituawa to Maile Sesio Kaputoa Vesa. As we gather before God, we ask for His blessings on them. And we are to share in the joy of their union. The Bible talks about our Lord Jesus Christ being present at a wedding in Cana of Galilee, very close to his hometown. At that wedding, Jesus performed his first miracle. And likewise, he is right here, right now, with us. Through the presence of his Holy Spirit. The Bible teaches us that marriage is a gift. Marriage is an institution of God in creation and it's also a means of His grace. Marriage is a union in which man and woman become one flesh. For marriage, it is God's purpose that as husband and wife give themselves to each other in love throughout their lives. They shall be united in that love. This is an image of Christ united with His Church. In marriage, the husband and wife may comfort each other. They live faithfully together in need and in plenty, in sorrow and in joy, with delight and tenderness, they may strengthen the union of their hearts and their lives. Marriage means that they may have children and be blessed in caring for them and bringing them up in accordance with the will of God to His praise and His glory. In marriage, Husband and wife belong to one another. And they begin a new life in the community. Marriage is a way of life that all should honor. And it should not be undertaken carelessly, lightly, or selfishly. Instead, marriage should be undertaken reverently and responsibly. Jonathan and Tor are about to begin a new life in marriage, created and sanctified by God. In this ceremony, ladies and gentlemen, both of them will express their agreement to one another. They will unite their hands and they will exchange heartfelt promises as a symbol of their commitment. They will exchange rings, signifying their dedication to the union. Therefore, on this day, we pray with them that strengthened and guided by God, 
they may fulfill his purpose for the entirety of their earthly life together. But first, I am required to ask anyone present who knows a reason why Jonathan and Tor may not woefully marry to declare it now. Jonathan and Tor. The vows you are about to take are to be made in the name of God. He is the judge of all. And he knows all the secrets of our hearts. Therefore, if any of you knows a reason why may you may not lawfully marry, you must declare it now. Let me take the right hand. Take his right. Do take her right hand. Jonathan, will you take Tor to be your lawfully wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do you part? You may say I do. I do. <laughs> Tom, will you take Jonathan to be your lawfully wedded husband, to love and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish till death do you part. I do. Let's sing our first worship song. You may.
to the choir for those beautiful singing, sweet to the ear, and soothing to the heart. I sense a lot of stress up here, so that song really helped. So I think from now on, we will continue with our service. And may I be given the rings, please, flower girls. It's the prayer to bless the rings. Heavenly Father, by your blessing, let these rings be to Jonathan and Toa a symbol of unending love and faithfulness, to remind them of the vow and covenants which they have made this day through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And you turn to me. Toa. Toa. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. Before God. Before God. And this congregation. And this conversation. May we remain. May, may we remain within the love. Within the love. Within the love of our Lord, of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jonathan, Jonathan, I give you this ring. I give you this ring as a sign of our marriage. As a sign of our marriage. Before God. Before God. And this congregation. And this congregation. May we remain. May we remain within the love. Within the love of our Lord. Of our Lord. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. You may face the congregation. In the presence of God and this congregation, Jonathan and Toa have given their consent and made their marriage vows to each other. They have declared their marriage by the joining of hands and by the giving of the rings and receiving of the same. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, by virtue of the power given to me by the Congregational of Church of Jesus and the people and government of New Zealand, I now declare them husband and wife. Jesus Christ himself he says that what God has joined together let no man take it apart you may face each other Jonathan you may kiss your bride <laughs> <laughs> At this point in time, we're going to say the prayer to bless the newly wedded couple. 
May I ask that all the ministers, pastors in this building to come forward to bless. And if Pastor Tino is here today, may I ask that you pray on our behalf. I was told that Pastor Tupai as well was going to be here. you may come up here please lay your hands on the heads and I will say the prayer Almighty God, pour out your blessing upon them who are sanctified in your own name, that they may abide in this holy covenant which they have made before you today. Pour out your love upon their home and their family. Fill them with your goodness so that they may continue to love one another and be receptive to your holy will. Grant them your wisdom, dear Father. Let them build their family in meekness, in humility, in faith, in hope, and in the fear of your Lord. Grant them your peace day by day. Shine your gracious eyes upon them. Grant them your patience and courage that they are able to face temptations and difficulties in this life. As parents, give them your wisdom that they raise up your children in your ways. Lead them into a personal and everlasting relationship with you in this life and beyond. And we pray all this in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir.
creation. <coughs> Nothing is complete if we didn't hear from the Word of God. Therefore, at this point in time, let us join our hearts together in wishing the newly wedded couple all the blessings that lie ahead of them in the future. <coughs> Let them have, may God bless them with all the wisdom that they may live their lives and guide them on their daily, their lives on a daily basis. That they make wise choices in this life. Talking about wisdom. Here is what the wisest man ever lived apart from Jesus Christ himself. This is what he had to say. In Proverbs chapter 3, verse, verses 1 to 4, and this is how it reads from the Good News Translation. Don't forget what I teach you, my son. Always remember what I tell you to do. My teaching will give you a long and prosperous life. Never let go of loyalty, love, and faithfulness. Tie them around your neck. Write them on your heart. If you do this, both God and man will be pleased with you. <coughs> In other translations it says, let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. <coughs> write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor <coughs> in the eyes of both God and man. What does the book of Proverbs say about wisdom? It tells us a lot of good stuff. The book of Proverbs is one of the five books in the Old Testament that has been given a name of the wisdom books. Job, Psalm, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, and the Song of Solomon. Those are the five books in the Old Testament that are classified or given the title, the wisdom books. Why are they called the wisdom books? Because they give us a lot of practical advice about the wise choices that we need to make in our daily lives, in our relationships, and in a lot of things we do. What is wisdom then? And what is intelligence and what is knowledge? We seem to be using those terms interchangeably during our lives. But are they the same? They are related, but they are not exactly the same. Intelligence, you may have intelligence. A lot of people have intelligence. There are people who have many university degrees. There are people who, whose education have been, you know, very, very good. And there are evidences of that. I call this intelligence. But what is wisdom, by the way? Wisdom is how you use that intelligence. It's how you use that knowledge. So you can be very, very intelligent. And if you don't use that intelligence in a wise way, then you are a fool. 
There are many intelligent people in the world and they are all fools when they don't live according to the will of God. So wisdom is the wise choices that we make. Wisdom is when we live our lives in accordance with the will of God. There are two kinds of women in the book of Proverbs. Woman wisdom and woman folly. In other words, the good woman and the bad woman. And there is also a two kinds of sons or daughters there are in the Bible, in the book of Proverbs. The son who listens and the son who doesn't. At the very beginning of this chapter here, don't forget what I teach you, my son. Always remember what I tell you to do. And then in verses 3 and 4 it says, Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor in the eyes of God and the eyes of man. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Why is it important to do that? Because there is a reward. And the reward is you will win favor. You will earn respect from God himself and your fellow men. Is there a wisdom of the world? I think we can say that there is wisdom of the world. And it is very in stark contrast with the wisdom of God. The wisdom of God says marriage is between a man and a woman. And the wisdom of the world says you can do whatever you want. Whether a man marrying another man or a woman marrying another woman. That is the wisdom of the world. And it's very different. And it's quite the opposite of the wisdom of the, this. The wisdom of God. Therefore, the wisdom of the world is sheer stupidness, stupidity or foolishness. If we look at the way the world is heading and the way the people are living their lives on a daily basis, we need wisdom and we need lots of it. Because if we don't use wisdom, we are heading to hell. We go against the will of God and the will of God is for us to glorify His name. Do we glorify God by one man marrying another man or one woman marrying another woman? Definitely no, because it's against the will of God. Let's talk about love and faithfulness. We're wishing the newly wedded couple all the love and the faithfulness that they are able to handle. So what is the kind of love that King Solomon is talking about? Now there are six kinds of love or five or six. There is also the kind of love in accordance with the Greek language that is called Eros. It's the love between the man and his wife or the wife and the husband. What the kind of love that the Proverbs is talking about is the kind of love that is called in the Hebrew language, it's hesed. It means the love that is steadfast, the love that is unchangeable in regardless of what happens. This is the kind of love that we that builds 
and maintains relationships and marriage. The kind of love that Paul is talking about, the kind of love that he wrote to the Corinthians and said, love is patient. Love doesn't, it is the kind of love that God has. And we are capable of loving like God. We are capable of hesed like because we are created in the image of God. So God gave us that capability to love like He does. Steadfast love. Immovable love. Indestructible love. That is the kind of love that is required of us members of the body of Christ. As members of the body of Christ, we are to love like He does. The kind of love that is sacrificial, He offered Himself on the cross so that we may be saved. We can also do that in our marriages, in our homes. The love that doesn't keep a record of wrongdoings. The kind of love that, it is not the kind of love that that if you love me and my family, I will love your family back. You know, if Jonathan was saying this to you, then he doesn't love you. Then he doesn't love to you know, The true love is that it doesn't depend on what other people do to me. <clears throat> It doesn't matter if your family loves me or not. I will love you and will love them back. Okay? The love that Jesus Christ gave us. We are to live that love. We are to commit to each other. The kind of love that builds and maintains relationship until death do you part. You have just said that yourself. You have just committed that into your marriage. Keep it, honor it, and the reward is you will earn respect from God and your fellow man. We all wish you all the very best. I don't believe in saying good luck. Because I don't think luck is in the dictionary of God. God blesses people. So we don't say good luck. We say to you, bless. Be blessed and be fruitful. Can we hear again from the beautiful choir?
Mrs. Jonathan Fitu Awa. May I ask both parties to please be upstanding as we prepare to make our way through the aisle. 